the Great American Road Trip. Whether you are the Joad family or the Griswold family, it is part of American car culture. It is a chance to see the people, places, and things that make up this country. History, natural beauty, the world's largest rocking chair. But at some point, you will have to go to the bathroom. Gas station bathrooms have their own lore and perhaps their own strains of bacteria, and that has challenged and frightened Americans for many generations. So, during one of our treks across the country, when we found a little bit of road architecture heaven on the Ohio Turnpike, this architect was inspired. The thesis of Booth Tarkenton's novel, The Magnificent Ambersons, later turned into a film by Orson Welles, was how the automobile would change American society and architecture. And that impact is still with us today. It made the suburbs possible. It democratized travel and therefore travel accommodations. And we design our buildings to permit us to spend more time inside of our cars. For some, their car is more important than their home. Even before there was power steering, there were attempts to build a road system that would accommodate this new mode of travel. The Bronx River Parkway, built from 1922 to 1925, was the first dedicated automobile freeway landscaped for beauty along the river connecting New York City to what was once considered the country. It's now a suburb. These majestic little stone buildings along it, accompanied by a gas pump, had only an office and a bathroom of sorts. It was not a food stop. You could barely fit one family-sized bag of Doritos inside. Modern gas stations came later, with bright porcelain enamel panels, glass garage doors for service stations, but the bathrooms were still a question. And you might find personal complete control and inner superpower before you would use one of them. With the Eisenhower Interstate Road System started in the 1950s, highway design became the focus of engineers, graphic designers, and architects. And not since the ancient Roman Empire had a highway system this size been built. The US Interstate raised the bar for the roadside toilet. I recall in the 1960s being fascinated with the automatic flushing urinals on the Indiana toll road. Were they really automatic? Or was there someone behind that eyeball-sized red glass plate who was really watching? Regardless, I don't think roadside rest stop architecture reached its peak until the latter years of the last millennium. In the 1990s, the New York Thruway Authority created a series of rest stops designed by Bayer, Blinder, and Bell that finally dedicated enough space for the modern minivan family. There were clean, large, hands-free toilets, as sanitary as possible, considering humans would still use them. Refreshments of all kinds could be acquired by the fast food chains that one might actually see at a regional mall food court. BB&B &B is a New York City firm, so to them, anything north of 225th Street is upstate country. You get the sense they were inspired by the Bear Mountain Inn, so their Adirondack style spoke with Riverstone piers and heavy timbers, as if built by lumberjacks and from which you would go bear hunting. But they seem to be only plain country. And you get the sense it's as real as the wood panels on the side of the family station wagon. And as comfortable as they are, they seem to have put the visual apex of car travel back into the day of the Model T Ford. At the same time, on the Ohio Turnpike, the rest stops designed by Gilberti Spittle International, with Denver Brooker as lead architect, added fun and adventure back to the American road trip with a more modern vision. They look like they should be surrounded with the battleship-sized cars that Americans drove in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. This is the V8 375 horsepower engine of rest stops. Let's start at the main entrance. There is a beckoning canopy supported on a single column that pierces the roof upward into the sky like a proud hood ornament. The sweeping curves of the main lobby make you feel like you are cornering a banked roadbed. Clear story windows might have been inspired by Wright's Prairie School, but it brings in natural light to the interior spaces from above, as if the top is down on your T-bird. And the food court is usually domed with exposed ribs, like the chassis of a Cadillac 
or the grill of an Oldsmobile, if only they were chrome-plated. Some credit the clean, sterile look of modernism as a reaction to the dank, dark, musty interiors of the Victorian period. Perhaps the Spanish flu of 1918 has as much to do with spreading modernism as Le Corbusier. These rest stops then evoke clean modernism. It's as if the buildings are beckoning to the weary travel. We've been waiting for you. Come, relieve your bladder in our clean and roomy, hands-free bathrooms. Come, have a fancy overpriced coffee. Come, enjoy fast and snack foods in a bonanza of roadside cuisine imagined only in your wildest dreams. Some of our greatest family moments together have been on our weeks-long road trips across North America. But for some family members, the trek into the unknown was too fearsome to comprehend. But if I assured them there would always be some sort of familiar fast food and a clean place to go to the bathroom, they were willing to try. My goal, which I illustrated on a t-shirt I printed up for one of our trips, was to get them out of their comfort zone, through the fear zone, and into the adventure zone. Of course, you can go too far, and we wanted to stay out of the stupid zone. And so our willingness to risk the occasional outhouse latrine with the knowledge that there would eventually be a clean rest stop bathroom in our future allowed us to do all sorts of things. It allowed us to climb trains in Union, Illinois, to hike down to the Indian Garden in the Grand Canyon, to smell the sulfur pits of the Dragon's Mouth at Yellowstone, to climb up the Curituck Beach Lighthouse in North Carolina, to arrive too late for the Spam Museum in Minnesota, to kayak in the Breton Highlands, and to play air guitar in front of the Buddy Holly statue in Lubbock, Texas. I knew that one way or another, for good or for bad, they would have plenty of memories. I am Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex.